questions. Welcome. I'm John Caldera, president of the Independence Institute and your devil's advocate. Well, it's that time of year. I figure it's time for a little checkup of the legislature. I never want them to go without somebody looking at them. From Channel 4 News, it's Sean Boyd. Thank you for being here. Thank you. And from Grand Junction Sentinel. Daily Sentinel. Get Damn. it right. Wow. Come on. It's a long, that's four words. <laughs> Sorry. Charles Ashby now without the without the beard without the beard yeah you look, you i had it for a long time i look yeah. just like you There's no yeah. hair and beard yeah. on the chin and we were you brothers look, you look you look sweet and adorable and respectful oh, don't you even. look mean is you that your nasty. is that your foot yeah, you were nasty before <laughs> all right let's take a look at the legislature uh, be, before we get into all the all the bills let's let's talk about the the Higgin bloopers because that's just damn fun mm -hmm. uh, I, and I'm, I'm trying to understand why people are upset about this now he introduced his his uh, let's lieutenant see the mayor governor. and the lieutenant governor. One was a sex, sex star, star <laughs> and not a sex symbol, and the other <laughs> one was a was in the shower well, with well, his yeah, wife. Right? He was joking yeah, about the fact that President Obama sings to his wife in the shower, so he was trying to play off from that and talk about because Mary Louise is a big singer. So he said, calling he, her fat. What did what does she do to her husband in the shower? Yeah. Right? Yeah. It, it just it, I think he had yeah. the best line though. Hickenlooper after the fact he said, "There's five feet between me and disaster. That's uh -huh. the difference uh -huh. between my foot and my mouth." <laughs> uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah, it was funny. It it was it was a good yeah. now the yeah. the sex star one. Now he was introducing. The lieutenant governor to school kids, wasn't he? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so a he, bunch of school kids. In the yeah, room. so yeah. he was supposed to be a sex symbol. Is that a whole lot better for well, a bunch I of little? He was going for, for rock, rock star. star. He yeah. calls him a rock but star. But then he said, and he said that before. But it's yeah. just, you know, it's inevitable with this governor because he he <laughs> talks off the cuff all the time like that, and, and he doesn't ever know where he's going with it. And he was trying to be yeah, funny. I wonder what that's yeah. like. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you don't know anything yeah. about that. Usually you're funny about yeah. it. I mean, your reaction to it was the funniest. Was like, yeah, the governor's wife has pictures of you in the shower. She does. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't want to know. I really don't want to know. So, so <laughs> along come two African-American ministers saying, this is not just a flub. It's that racism. we African-Americans mm. have been for too long sexualized. And let me make it clear, no, we Italians for too long have been sexualized. <laughs> I didn't know you were half Italian, so am I. Half Italian, half yeah. Polish. Oh, oh. Once able to make myself an offer, I couldn't understand. <laughs> All right, so, so they said this. This was this was not just exploitation, but this was black exploitation. This was mm. this you know put on the movie Shaft in the background and 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 go. What? Come on, can can we just agree, guys? Chill out. That that was a ridiculous. I, I didn't thing. really understand where they were coming from. I really. I mean, yeah, you had you had an Hispanic in Joe Garcia, and you had had a black in the in the, in the mayor. I, I don't think that had anything to do with it. I mean, I've covered the governor for some time now, even when he was mayor, and I, I don't get any sense that he is. <laughs> Oh, yeah. He was just trying to be funny, he, and he just, he's a big he racist, it. big pervert, big racist. Well, that's, uh, that's your words. No, I, uh, <laughs> no he told me. Yeah, so, oh, okay. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. The mayor well, said, you know, no offense taken, basically, yeah. in the end. And same with the lieutenant governor. They get this. This is just taking looper, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, I, yeah. Would you say the reverence went, went overboard? This was, this was an example of hypersensitivity. Go out on a limb. I'm not going to say anything about oh, that. Oh, come on. How about over here? I'm not going to do it. You're not going to do it? I'll do it. Hypersensitivity. You should have. Relax. Now, I understand social conservatives get very upset about this. So I see that a lot on my side. Mm -hmm. I thought Democrats were hip and swing, uh, you know, madmen watching cats and dogs. So, no. Were they Democrats? I don't even know. I don't yeah. know. Were the ministers Democrats? You're making an assumption. I am making an assumption. Yeah. I, I'll stand by that <laughs> assumption, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, so is this over now? Do you think? Uh, the, no. The governor is still governor. He's going to speak again, and he'll make another flub. You yeah. watch. You watch. Maybe it won't be it as It may funny, not be sexual innuendo yeah. yeah. the next time. But, yeah. 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 but it'll yeah. be something. It'll yeah. be in, something. Yeah. In, in your endo. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sorry. All right. Let's get rolling. Now let's go to the bills. Let's, let's talk a little per diem. <clears throat> Um, now, now we've got a bad economy. We've got we've got uh, unemployment that's high, mm -hmm. and we've got legislators who don't make a lot of money. They make mm -hmm. thirty grand. I remember when they made seventeen grand, mm -hmm. but that's for what five months of work? Is that about right? Well, technically, you can living on it. Right? Well, you can argue that they work year round, but not necessarily. Right. It's not a, necessarily a full time job. And some of them it is. Some of them are retired. The session. And, and they, it's they get not paid even the, the issue of the money. I mean, it's not even a matter of what we all deserve a pay raise. Okay. 
It's not a matter of that. It's a matter of the timing of it. I mean, they haven't even gotten the, the revenue forecast. They have no idea if they're going to get more money in tax revenue in the next for the next budget year. We, we just got an unemployment report this week that sh shows numbers going up, not down, in this state. They've, they've cut millions of dollars in schools and right. social service programs and prisons. They're still talking about closing more prisons. Well, we've still got and another the, $600 million that we've got to come up with. Here, right, right, right. And the first thing they do in a bipartisan fashion, I will, I will add, is raise <laughs> their per diem. And, they, and their biggest argument was it's not pay, it's per diem, it's not pay. Because because my wallet knows right. the difference. Right. Per, per yeah. diem is what you get paid to offset your expenses. If right. you're driving into town, right. you get a certain much. If if you're out of out of town, you need to uh, have a place to stay mm -hmm. during a session. They it's give you pay. more. Right. So it, it, it's pay. It's pay. Right. My right. local Absolutely. lawmakers, uh, Re Representative Ray Scott, called it. It's not per diem. It's per diem pay. That's what I like to call it. What's the difference, right. Ray? I don't get right. it. But it's pay. It's yeah. It's but a pay it increase. Is, you're right. It is about yeah. timing. It makes me think about the CU situation mm -hmm. too, with them um, voting them or get, giving themselves a pay raise at the same time that they're raising tuition. Mm -hmm. Here we are making all of these cuts in the state budget, at the same time lawmakers are getting this raise. It doesn't right. look good. Right. And then they also argue that you know this law was actually passed in 2007, and so we have no it's, choice. Right. This is just but, well. An they've delayed it every year since then by introducing another bill to say we're going to delay this another year. Okay, but this per diem bill was 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 sponsored by the leadership in both the House and the Senate, Democrats and Republicans, and the same guys who have the authority to say, okay, you can do a late bill, to do that bill to delay the per diem, except that we're the guys who want the per diem and we won't give you the late bill. So they'll so, suspend senior homestead exactly. tax exemption, yeah. but they won't suspend the right. pay raise. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right, so, hey, exactly. For, 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 this is a little inside baseball. Let's bring, okay. bring it up. So they have delayed again the the homestead exemption. Well, which, they haven't. No, they haven't. Yeah, they're not done so, yet. And they're that's the yet. funny thing, yeah. or interesting dynamic here, is that this senior homestead tax exemption, a property tax exemption on or, the first two hundred thousand dollars of a senior's home, no uh, means test. So every senior gets this. Right. This is something that has been suspended, but it will automatically go back in to play unless there is a bill that says we're going to suspend it again. Mm -hmm. So it's automatically going to happen right now right. unless in this election year some lawmaker says, I don't want seniors to have this well, tax break again. They, right, they, they did, did it two years ago. Let me, though, let, me go, yeah, let me go on, uh, on a limb here. Mm -hmm. I'm guessing there's going to be a late bill status that says seniors shouldn't have to. Maybe to not. This. The governor doesn't yeah. want it. The governor is saying he wants to put more money into the property tax exemption fund for a means tested thing. And right. he's saying we don't have the money yet to do that because we still have to restore money to other things. Wow. So we don't know yet. I mean, that's still the big battle between the Republicans. <laughs> And here's the other thing, that, when did we approve that, 2000, we approved that? I think it's been funded one year in that time. <laughs> We've had so many recessions that it kept getting suspended. suspended. So it, and, and then the Republicans keep saying that, it, you know, I don't want to raise taxes on the seniors. Well, how can you raise taxes for people who never got the exemption in the first place? <laughs> it's not an increase in taxes. But that's, that's neither here nor there. But it's, it's $100 right. million. Dollars. Yeah. So it's, a, it's lot a lot of money, of money yeah. that you have to come up with at this point. But Republicans say, well, what about all these film incentives out there? What about the energy office that wants more money? And, and even the money that the governor is putting into this fund that helps the low-income seniors with their rent and their heating, $17 million. You know, what about all of these these monies out there? Economic development, another, I think, $5 million. And you're sort of nickel and diming it, but mm -hmm. but they are coming up with places in the budget that they say, hey, look, you know, this is this is going to take effect. And so we need to come up with other places to cut at this point. Corrections is another area that I think could see cuts. Right, but, but at the same it. time, how much, how much was the, the, the per diem increase? So the, every day now, it was a it was a small amount. It was yeah. like twenty six thousand yeah. dollars, or I can't remember exactly. What it, was. it went from one hundred fifty dollars to one hundred eighty three dollars during the session, and it was like I can't remember what the number was. Right, so it, but it, it was it, in the thousands compared to yeah. the millions. Right, right. right. All, in aggregate, it wasn't that much, but right. as a percentage increase, it was a pretty sizable percentage. Twenty two percent. Right, so they got twenty two percent yeah. increase yeah. in in their in their per diem. But yeah. I think what a lot of people were angry about was that it wasn't talked about on the floor. When they talked about pay, and they mm -hmm. talked about it back in, was it 2007, I forget, mm -hmm. there was an honest debate on the floor where everybody right. could see, and you know, now that we've got Colorado government television, we can see what's going on on the floor. Right. Yeah, we'll watch Does it. anybody watch it? Do you watch it? Yeah, I, I got a broken remote oh. control. Yeah. <laughs> it's either that or, or channel 12, and God, I'm not watching that. So, um, so they've, they've, they didn't have a real open debate about this. Any is that, is that the, there was no discussion. Yeah, That's what alerted the first reporter, which was Pat Malone from the Pueblo Chieftain, um, 
to the whole thing. It was like, wait a minute, this passed, just barely passed by like two votes. And it's, it, the bill is the funding bill for the legislature. And usually it's, you know, 65 to zero. There's no debate. It's not a big deal. You know, and he was like, well, what's going on? So he asked some questions about it. And then he finds out that it's got the per diem in there. Oh, by the way, it doesn't have pay raises for staffers in the legislature, just for the lawmakers. Lawmakers, right. Well, yeah. trust but, me. But you're right. Legis staff does a whole lot better than lawmakers. Right. I think it's fair to say that even, even in a bad economy, it is okay to have a discussion about legislators' pay. If this is your job, and it's, you know, this is half the year, is $30,000 enough to, to, to make ends meet? Mm -hmm. And also, I think the pay keeps a lot of good people from uh, from running because it destroys your ability to make money the other half of the year. Unless, mm -hmm. unless you're a farmer and you can plant your seed and harvest your seed in that off season, you know, there's really not another job you can do that mm -hmm. you can just turn off completely and then turn back on. Completely. You're making good argument for this pay raise. Well, <laughs> and, and I, don't mind, I don't mind the pay raise. Yeah, what I mind argument. is having an open and honest discussion about it. Right. Well, and they finally had that argument after we in the press noticed it and wrote stories about it, and they were mad. McNulty right. was mad at us for even noticing. Why was the speaker mad? Because we noticed. He didn't want it to be noticed. Well, now. Schaefer signed on to this, President Schaefer. Schaefer signed off on, on, on to it. He was one of the leaders that was on it, and then when it got approved through the Senate, he took his name off the bill. Wait a second. Let me think about this. So I don't know so why his name was he on did it, that. And then yeah. his name was off and it. And he voted There's, against it. Any, any, any speculation on that, Ms. Boyd? He's Appointed. running for Congress. Appointed. Oh, he's running <laughs> for Congress. Well, see, Sal Pace is also running for Congress, and McClosey... Uh, uh, What's his name? I pronounce his Joe name. Joe McClosey. Yeah, McClosey. He's running is, against Congress. And they, I think they both voted against it, too. Mm. So in other words, you're running, wrong, if you're running for Congress, you don't want people to know. But well, Schaefer guess what? was running for Congress before he pulled his name. It's just an election issue. It's yeah. an election issue no matter what. That's why I can't believe that they actually allow that to go through. It's a big election year for the Republicans and the Democrats in the House. Never mind All Congress. Right. You know, I mean, if one vote majority in, in, the, in the House for the Republicans... And this is, with redistricting now, we have no idea right. how it's going to work out. It's, it seems like a dumb thing for them to do. For both sides, for both right. parties. Right. I guess, you know, it's even worse when Schaefer says, here's my name on it. Oh, you saw what I was doing. No, 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 no longer. See? I mean, who's going to buy that in the general election when he runs for Congress? He, he put his name on it, and then he got caught, and he pulled his name off. If there's it, an ad, that's what I'll say in reality. It check. Is, it oh, is, good. All right. It is so, what it is. So you'll, you'll be able to verify it when he yes. wins. All right. Mm -hmm. There you go. That's one ad. If there's an ad? What if there's that? an ad. If yeah. there's an ad. Thank me for that one. Yeah. Right. All right. Let's, uh, <laughs> let's, let's keep rolling. So midseason, what, uh, what else was hot? Uh, what ever happened with Laura Bradford and the, the, Laura nasty, Bradford the, the nasty drunk driving oh. case that was never that was never uh, uh, adjudicated. So she was pulled over, allegedly drunk driving. Mm. She was allegedly said, you can't touch me, I've got immunity. And then later on, the police officer said, yeah, no. she didn't say that. In fact, no. she said the opposite. No. She said, don't treat me any differently right. from any other citizen Actually, I believe she said, so. don't treat me any differently. <laughs> no. No, and no. she said, I had one glass of wine, and then a bit later said, I had three, three glasses But she also wine, said so. that she was coming from a legislative function. And at a bar. And it was a bar. And it, you know, <laughs> it happens. They go after hours all the time, just like any work, work right. situation. You go have drinks after hours. It's not a work function where you're coming from. It's a local bar. She still maintains that she's coming from a legislative function just because there were lobbies there and former lawmakers there and some members of the press. Not me. Not you. <laughs> she got but, mad. At, uh, yeah. She got yeah. mad yeah. at yeah. the speaker for well, calling this ethics investigation, yeah. threatening to leave the Republican Party, which it would have cost them that one-seat majority, and who knows what would have happened right, to committees right, down right, there, right. And caucuses, and it just would have thrown everything into chaos. And then the Ethics Committee so. basically said there's no evidence of anything, so we dismissed the whole thing. Okay, then, that day, <laughs> that was on a Friday, I drove home to Grand Junction, she drove home to Grand Junction, she talked to a local television station, she said, oh, I never threatened to leave the party. That was something the, the media made up. Yeah, I pissed we me off because yeah. I had to work the next day on a Saturday, ruin my golf game. All right? Trust me, I've, I've seen <laughs> you play I, golf. It's already ruined. <laughs> oh, thanks. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> anyway, so <laughs> I get her on the phone, and I'm like, what? We have her I have you on tape. You have her on camera saying it. We, you know, the Post did a story. I did a story saying it. You know, she, basically she went home to, because she was getting hit by Republicans there saying, what are you doing threatening to leave the party? It was bizarre upon bizarre. It was bizarre, <laughs> but guess what? She's got two 
challengers in a primary now. Another also, one just came out this week. Also, she had a, a bit of bad news as well, as this was all going down. Her husband had a serious heart, heart attack. attack. I wonder what over. And so she needed to go back and take care of well, that. And I, hope, I hope he's doing well. She called me the day after that story ran about the, her lying to the local mm -hmm. TV station. She calls me up and she says, Charles, after reading your story, my husband had a heart attack. <gasps> as, she didn't. as if it was my fault. That's what she said. I'm sorry. All right. Well, we'll leave. We'll leave that one right there. Let's move on. But at, at this point, she's in the party. The ethics investigation is over. Is over. And she's back, chair of the committee that yeah. she was chair of, that yeah. she'd been removed from for a short time mm -hmm. while the ethics mm -hmm. investigation. Yeah. Was at the underway. end of the month, we're looking at the the county assembly. We'll see what delegates she gets and see right. how it works. Uh, you. I, I know you spend, you're what's known as a weekend warrior, in that on the weekends you, you take off this nice uh, newswoman's dress garb and put on your Harley clothes and, <laughs> and, and ride, and uh, you, you look menacing. I'll, well, I'll say that. thank you. What was this biker's bill that you had? Uh, what was it, right? What, yeah, what was it? It was weird. Bikers apparently are being discriminated against and tossed from bars because they they're bikers. Just like bikers, right? So it was a clothing thing. It was, um, you can't discriminate based on your attire, I think was what the bill said. So just. Uh, and who was behind it? McClosey. McClosey was, yeah. that's right. Yeah. John McClosey was behind that. And he went through with it, and it failed in committee, of course. Of course. I think the chair called it the silliest bill he's ever seen. <laughs> uh, um, I'm sure there have been sillier right. ones, but. Uh, uh, right. Yeah, I mean, it, you know, yeah. dress codes exist out field. there. So, in other words, in other words, if you're going in with your with your neo-Nazi uniform on, uh, they can't kick you out. So what's next, though? Discriminating against. You no. can't discriminate against. Well, no Small shirt, no, shirt no shoes, no, no service. Be, I mean, yeah. it's, it's, there are dress it's the codes proprietor's choice to serve who, are the, who they want to serve. You know? yeah. it's, it's Unless you're a protected property. class. Uh, are there a lot of boats? Are there a lot of biker bikers. boats that he's trying to get? <laughs> I, I, I don't yeah. care. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. What is what is the biker contingency in the voter block? Right. You know, you have you have the elderly who vote uh, in, in huge numbers, and but bikers. You don't want to mess with the well, bikers. That's true. An oh. elderly biker. Although, <laughs> I, oh yeah, with with the. Uh, uh, the property tax exemption. <laughs> <laughs> what I love is every now and then you, you piss off the bikers, and it, it makes for just great visuals oh, for, yeah. for you guys <laughs> for television because and all of a sudden the, the committee rooms are, are packed full of bikers. Mm -hmm. All you need to do is put in one bill to require a helmet law, <laughs> and, and then they will circle and, they and do, circle. And that's and happened many times. They've yeah. done that, and that's when they the only time they show up. In fact, uh, I think it's called Bike Pack, Colorado Bike Pack. They used to have a lobbyist, yeah. a really nice guy. He was a farmer out in Byers. Or at least he was. I haven't seen him in years. Um, used to be there all the time, watching for that bill. That yeah. was the one issue: was no helmet. Well, it that, never it, closed. It, never came up. Uh, yeah, I mean that's public choice theory in action. Right. And that you notice that we have a seatbelt law because when when they vote on that. We in cars don't sit there and circle the, the <laughs> Capitol and, and pack, but helmet laws and they're Well, wait dissipate. till Congress threatens to withhold some transportation money for helmets, and then maybe you'll see that bill. Uh, you'll see the bill, but it won't pass, yeah. I guarantee you. It yeah, won't pass. Not this right away, but eventually it will, because it took years for that seatbelt law to pass. And uh, it took years for the uh, drinking age to go right. up for the same reason. Right. And, and the, the uh, open uh, container. Open container, and yeah. then also the blood alcohol content. So, right, yeah, so to go down. It's yeah. not Colorado yeah. that takes care of Colorado laws. Yeah. It's Washington, D.C. holding up our own money. <laughs> Almost makes you want to be a conservative, doesn't it? All right, let's. let's <laughs> Was this an advertisement for? Everybody? Yeah, it's a half-hour-long oh, advertisement. Is it, is it? Hair club for men. <laughs> um, <laughs> there's a literacy uh, bill going on. What? What is that? The school literacy. So the governor, a uh, rare move. He comes and he testifies in favor of this bill that, um, you know, in simple terms, it sets up a statewide measure for reading proficiency. And if by third grade you haven't met this measure you would be, well, they say it's not mandatory retention, but essentially right. that's what we're talking about here. You'd flunk. They'd, right. they'd hold you back in third grade until you, you know, make sure that you get the help you need to become proficient. So the governor, he really gave some... Um, moving testimony. Yeah, it, it was, was really moving. Yeah. He, in, he, in favor he, of, of having Very heartfelt yeah. testimony about yeah. how he was dyslexic as a child. And, and he's talked about that before. Right, but, yeah. he, but he talked about it in this uh, case, how behind he always felt. Right, um, but, but what he didn't, never said and was... That he flunked. 
Yeah. Second, he was held yeah. back in second grade. Was it second um, or, or se not seventh, second, seventh, seventh grade? grade yeah. Seventh grade, yeah. he was held back yeah. as a result of this, and yeah. said he really never read for pleasure until he got into high school. Mm -hmm. So it made you think about, you know, reading and how important it is. I would, I wouldn't know. So. I'm dyslexic. <laughs> I gave it up years really? ago. Oh yeah. Yeah, now read, reading's overrated. Watching television. <laughs> reading, well, yeah, thank you. Okay. <laughs> read, read a newspaper, okay? Stop watching TV. <laughs> they got, as long as they have comics, I'll watch it. So, so the governor said, don't hold kids back if, if, they, if they don't meet these standards. No, he testified in favor of this bill. So That's what's said, interesting. He said, hold them back. Yes, he said they need to, they need to know how to read in well, order it's more to than succeed. That, but it, it talks about getting them helping them Help, to get getting so they the aren't held back right but then you know that's so you shocker identify at a them younger in, age you identify them in kindergarten so right. there would be pressure on the schools let's say right. to identify them early on and make sure they're up to speed by third grade otherwise you're going to have a lot of third graders being held back but you know the schools are saying a lot of them are obviously opposed to this this is another unfunded mandate um, right. you know uh, communities that represent uh, disabled children are also concerned about the bill because a lot of these children who have learning disabilities are not exempt so they feel like they would be held back in large numbers and so there are some you know maybe some quirks with the bill that they're going to need to work out through amendments did it pass committee it did pass committee mm -hmm. where's it headed house I think appropriations, appropriations first. Ah, yeah. uh, the kill committee. No, the state affairs. That's state, yeah. that's yeah. state <laughs> affairs. What is it? Oh, by the way, for people who don't know, what is what is a kill committee? It's a committee where they send it to die. The where, bill. where the speaker? Where they know that it's going to die. All right. So the speaker decides where bills bill in the decides. house go, and the president of the Senate decides where bills. So they decide what yeah. committee. It has to go to right. at least not one necessarily committee. kill. If there's a bill that they really want to get passed, it could go to the state of. That's why they created the state affairs. The history of that was in 1984 when we passed the Gavel Amendment that said you couldn't pocket veto bills that they all needed to be voted on. All right, slow down. Slow they, down. They, slow down. They created. This is, well, the slow state down. This is Colorado affairs. public television. There's a good chance that there's a lot of medical I'm marijuana to fit all right this now. stuff in there as much as <laughs> I can. So it used, so, to, be, so it used they, to be that legislature didn't have to vote on all Well, it's like bills. in Congress, they right. have the pocket veto, all right, where, where the chairman used to be able to say, oh, I don't like this bill, so I'm going to pocket it. Uh, you're okay. just not going to send you, it to committee. Yeah, right. and so, but they, they used to have that in the state. So they, in, in 84, they passed the gavel amendment that changed a lot of things, one of which was required every bill that's introduced to have a vote, at least one vote in the first body. So then they created the state affairs. I mean, it's just all affairs of the state. So any Anything bill, you so want, any bill, can any go bill there. would fit in it. So that was called the kill committee. So if there was a bill they didn't like, sometimes if there's a bill they really did like and they wanted to make sure it got passed, went to that committee. And though, so they so would basically take whatever care of it. party's in control in of either control. the House or the Senate right. has control of this the committee. Kill committee. Right. And yeah. so their yeah. job is to either kill a bill or to mm -hmm. to pass a bill. Mm -hmm. And so you, you by mm -hmm. by the president or the uh, yeah. you know, speaker's will. Right. right. And so you see the importance of this when you have bills like civil unions for same-sex couples, for example, that will pass through the democratically controlled Senate. When it comes over to the House, the question is, where will the speaker send this bill? Right. Well, he Where did send, he send it last well, time? He sent it to the, the committee that it belonged in, he, Judiciary. Well, and I think he also, because the Judiciary is now known as the Second Kill Committee. <laughs> it, really, it is. is it? Oh, yeah, it really is, because they got a lot of bills the last couple of years, particularly last year, that you know the, the speaker didn't like, and he knows the people on it and how they're going to vote, well, but, and that's where but, it's going to go. This and, year it and there's could no pass. votes on this that. This year, civil I don't know. unions could I don't know. It's the same yeah, people Ryan, on that committee. Well, as well, let's talk about Del Grosso. He's going to change. He may. I kind of doubt that. Maybe maybe he's, nickel, he, but he, I don't he, know. He's saying he's not going to say he's not going to come really? make his decision okay. until okay. the bill comes. You okay. say that and this is this is going to be a big a big issue. So civil unions, as it did last year, passed out of the Senate. Right. It's now in the Speaker's hands. Last year he sent it to the Judiciary, Judiciary Committee. committee. Mm -hmm. Why would that? Why is that the appropriate committee? Because it has it's to deal with laws. Yeah, it has to do with laws. Right. So it's, yeah. it's, a, I it's, mean, it's a contract, a contract. essentially, yeah. what you're talking about yeah. you here. So. so you wouldn't you wouldn't send it to the Ag Committee. You wouldn't send it to Transportation. Education. This, well, you could or, if you yeah. wanted to. Right, so, <laughs> so be speaker, you can do anything you want. All right, so, but you know? as Speaker, if people said, hey, you know, he sent it to a committee that he knew it was going to die, it was fair to say no. He no, sent it. I don't he think sent people it to the care that much. One. You talk about inside baseball. That's inside baseball. Right. Mm -hmm. No, I'm talking about the civil unions bill last year. No. Did, so he, he sent, sent it to judiciary. Mm -hmm. Sent it to the right place. Mm -hmm. All right. So I'm mm -hmm. assuming he's going to send it to the right place this year. You're going to say. He said he is. All right. Yeah. I. I you have more information than I do. I'm going to take that note down yeah. and then talk to Del Grosso. He said, oh, Del, Brian, I did interview Brian Del Grosso. Now he hasn't said which way he's going right. on this, but he is. 
he is truly the swing vote down there. There are Republicans who, I think half a dozen of them in the House, who have come out publicly and said they will vote for this. So if it makes it to the floor, it's a law. It will likely pass. Uh, Democrats will vote make, for it. That would make Colorado only the second state to pass a civil unions bill? Am I no, there's, 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 right? Three or four now? Yeah, I can't remember. Hawaii, Massachusetts? There's a few. A lot, of, a lot of them were done by court actions. New York was one of the few that was done by legislative action. I so, think, yeah, okay. I, I don't know. I cover one state. I can't cover all these right. states. You so, can't, just a report, just a lowly report. But, but to give you an idea of um, just how emotional this is, uh, Representative Del Grosso told me he's receiving thousands, tens of thousands of emails, he alone, and on this, this issue. This, after this, it's just and only he, go, go And he up. acknowledged, I know I'm the swing vote. How so many of them are coming from John Caldera? Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> I think they're encouraging a yes vote. No. <laughs> well, I'm, <not. laughs> what? I'm what, just what, going what, out on what a limb here, heard? John. What have you heard? No, so, um, uh, so all that pressure goes. Let, we've only got a minute left, so tell me, what, what's going to be the big surprise of, of the year? Do you see another big bump in the road, anything that pops out that... Uh, well, one of the big it, bills right now that's going to come up uh, early next week is on the re redoing the title committee. Telecommunications. telecommunications and it's very complicated it's got bipartisan support in both chambers um, isn't it amazing century. that the bills that have the most impact are the worst to cover because they're oh yeah, yeah the oh, budget yeah. Oh, redistricting yeah. I mean, it makes terrible. your eyes glaze yeah. over because it's like oh okay but but there's real impact to, to real people in their in their right. phone in bills. their bills you yeah. see anything else coming down the pike that's going to be wild and interesting Big surprise? Budget. Yeah, budget, obviously. No, I just At want the next scandal. Where's the next scandal? I'm if we could predict think, well, that, we wouldn't. Uh, you, you know, you, you, yeah. You'd have jobs in the media. Yeah, you you know, there's the voter <sighs> ID bill is out there again. I, I have ahead. a feeling it will probably die in the Sean, Senate. thank but. you. Charles, thank you. Thank you. Listen for me on KHOW, 5 p.m. on Sundays. Tell a friend, and we'll see you next week.